Hello everyone. After grinding out mission after mission and spending all of my hard earned medals, I was able to unlock and test out each of the new weapon in this month's war bond. If you haven't heard about it yet, this war bond is called Democratic Detonation and similar to the last war bond, Cutting Edge, with its theme of electricity and energy based items, Democratic Detonation has its theme of explosions and fire, but more so on the explosions part. And this war bond features four new weapons, three of them being primaries. One of them is a secondary, and they even slapped on a new grenade type and booster for us. And I played so much Health Divers 2 yesterday, trying to grind out metals, get a feel for these weapons, see what I think about them, and now I'm ready to, you know, share my thoughts and opinions with you all. And let's start with the secondary, the GP31 Grenade Pistol. And I'm gonna be honest with you, not much to say here. The game literally doesn't even have much to say about it beyond two of the most bare-bone descriptive sentences. It is a pistol that fires grenades and must be reloaded between shots. Easiest way to conceptualize what this pistol is is just a very miniaturized version of the grenade launcher support stratagem. I don't have really any interesting tips or tricks to share about it. It does what you expect it to. It can clear bug holes, blow up bot fabricators, and it can help in maybe demolishing some structures. It's pretty straight to the point and having a secondary with explosive properties can help with some versatility with your other loadout options. You're able to take stun grenades and be able to help still destroy objectives with your team. The only thing that I would say is quite notable about the grenade pistol is that you spawn in with having two rounds in. So you can quickly come out your pod, shoot two grenades, and then you need to reload after every subsequent shot. I don't know if this is what's intended. It just seems weird to me because if you reload the weapon, you can see that it only has space for one round. And the only way to get two rounds from what I've seen is when you spawn in from it. Also, the resupply rate for this for this weapon is pretty poor. If you were to pick up one of those field ammos when you're running around, you only replenish one grenade at a time. So for you to fully replenish, you need about eight or nine. And honestly, that's pretty much it. The grenade pistol isn't much to write home about. It's a nice addition and it does introduce the potential for loadout variety. I do think that we need a bit more different pistols in the game or different secondaries in the game. You know, because you have your basic pistol, you have a laser secondary, you have a revolver secondary, you know, machine pistol, and now you have an explosive pistol. So I think they're creating a good variety here, but in terms of the pistol itself, it's nothing quite extraordinary. It's not completely overwhelming. It's not underwhelming. It's just, it's just whelming. But that's it for the secondaries. There was only one pistol this war bond. So we're going to move on to the primaries now, which they introduced three of. So let's start with the bottom of the barrel here. We have the BR-14 Adjudicator. Honestly, I thought this to be the coolest looking gun and I had the highest hopes for the Adjudicator. It reminded me of those beam rifles from Halo from the way it looks because it's a very sleek looking, you know, futuristic weapon design. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, this is the worst gun of the war bond in my opinion it controls fair it has poor damage though and poor ammo capacity even with the fact that it has medium armor penetration if you were to be a cracked out shooter and get headshots all the time it would still take a lot of time to take out enemies such as devastators the gun features a semi-automatic or a fully automatic firing mode but i just found myself using the fully automatic most of the time it was just too much time to just you know take eight headshots to the devastator just to take it down that was the only way i was able to really you know clear out troops and mobs i know the gun says that it's not meant for taking out groups so well but i just had a highlight just because of how god awful it really is in taking out groups of enemies and using this in both bot or bug planets is hard to say because it doesn't excel in either it's very easy to say that it underperforms in both i found myself running out of ammo when using this gun constantly i found myself having to drop so many shots just to kill one thing i couldn't find anything to make it work that was beyond taking close engagements far engagements there was just nothing that was making me click with this weapon i had a very hard time making it work i feel like it needs a lot of adjustments moving forward for it to be more popular and i like to think that you know i gave it a very honest try a very earnest try and it is with that in mind do i feel confident enough to say that this gun is in need of some love let's go now to the other side of the coin we have the r36 eruptor and this is democratic detonation it is a bolt action explosive rifle easily the best weapon of the war bond if you were to weigh out the pros and cons let's start with the cons first it is a bolt action rifle so the fire rate is slow is very low as you need to wait after every shot to chamber in the next round you only have five shots per magazine if you had to reload with one already chambered in you can shoot up to six at a time and the gun does not actually have as long as of a range you think a bolt action rifle has but the round you fire will eventually explode after some time. If you were to shoot it 
you know, up in the air, you'll see that it'll travel some distance and then it'll go poof. And because of how explosive the rounds that this gun has, you should definitely avoid close quarters combat. You can definitely blow yourself up to bits if you were to shoot at something very close to you. And now the pros. Let's talk about what this gun can do. It can one-shot devastators. It can one-shot stalkers. It can close bug holes and bot fabricators. It is a primary weapon. It is a gun you spawn in with and you can take out some of the most common structure objectives. And with that in mind, you can also destroy some of the side objective structures such as the illegal broadcast. The explosive radius of the weapon is both a pro and a con because even though you can't take close quarters, uh, you know, fights, if you were to shoot at a group of enemies, you can easily get a multi-kill with every shot. I will go out to say that almost every shot you take will be a multi-kill. Even if you're trying to shoot, you know, a, like a, a Devastator or a Hulk, the surrounding units will just die from the explosive radius. Even if you were to have one bullet left, you could do so much with that one bullet. And even though you only have five rounds per magazine, they give you up to 12 reserve mags. I rarely found myself running out of ammo, if ever. To be able to clear out mobs, structures, objectives, and still support your team from far away with a primary weapon is beyond crazy. It's like a support stratagem level weapon kind of snuck its way into the primary loadout list. When Cutting Edge, The Last Warbond came out, the sickle was used everywhere and I could definitely see why. You know, it had good damage, basically infinite ammo. The fact that it's very used nowadays is easy to see. But once you see the Eruptor, you can definitely see how this will be the new thing in most games. It just does so much for so little. When it comes to whether or not to use it in bug or bot planets, I would definitely say that it excels in both. When fighting against bots, I found myself jiggle peeking a lot, taking a shot, you know, taking cover, chambering the next round, and then peeking out again and shooting. With the bugs, I kind of got into this loop where I, where hunters would jump on me and I would need to dive away and then shoot just because, you know, the explosive radius of the weapon is very large and I don't want to be caught in that. So I also like to take the jump pack so that I can also get some extra distance away and then shoot. But yeah, this weapon is just way too good. It is insanely, insanely useful for so many scenarios. I think that this gun is going to be everyone's favorite. I think it is the staple for the Warbond, and I think it's very, very fun to use. Experimenting with this has also been very fun to use, trying to see all the things you can do. So if you haven't tried out the Eruptor, please do. It will change your life. It will change your life. It will change your games. I promise you that. Lastly, from the primaries, we have the CB9 Explosive Crossbow. And... I was very surprised when the Eruptor was able to close bug holes and destroy bot fabricators. I'm very surprised that the Explosive Crossbow cannot do that. Even though it has the word explosive into it, it can't even open the storage containers. So th to me, this is a complete mob clearing weapon. It holds multiple shots at a time, which thank God it does, because it would really suck if you had to manually load a new crossbow every time you fire, so you can shoot up to five at a time. The explosive range is also a lot smaller than the Eruptor, meaning you will have to shoot you know a bit more closer to the enemy for the aoe damage to reach them close quarters is still pretty dangerous so you want to consider the space between you and your enemy before shooting however as a lightweight weapon you can also bring this up a lot faster when you aim down sights or just aim in third person meaning you can constantly run and gun with this uh, light armor jump pack and explosive crossbow is such a fun setup that i've learned you can quickly aim shoot dive and repeat that process and you can't do this with the eruptor because of how i guess big the gun is when you aim down sights the gun takes some time to center to the middle of your screen as opposed to the crossbow where once you aim it's pretty much already there and you can fire with accuracy when it comes to whether or not to use this on bug or bot planets i'd say it's fair in both scenarios and unlike the eruptor the explosive bolt will keep going until impact it does have some bullet chop to it so it's something to be considered if you're looking to engage from really far away the eruptor at to some degree does have some slight drop not as much when you consider things like the pistol grenade or the uh, crossbow i'd say it's a fair weapon with a decent amount of uses it's mainly going to be used for just you know thinning out waves of bots or bugs however i just think it's crazy that the weapon has the word explosive in it but it's not able to do what other explosives can do such as clear bug holes destroy bot fabricators or even open storage containers personally i think the game needs to be a bit more consistent on how it treats explosives but that's a discussion for another time so those are basically all the four new weapons introduced but i just want to quickly touch on the other two things that came such as a new grenade type and a new booster. So to start with the grenade, it is a G123 Thermite and is in my opinion, my favorite grenade in the game. I know some of you are really into your impact or to your stun grenades. Something I like to do with my stratagems like the EAT is simply just to use it to call it on a charger and watch the call down kill it. I like to treat the Thermite grenade in the same way to some degree. And how it works is you basically aim it, you prime it, you throw it, it sticks, it ignites, it burns, it explodes. 
something to note here at the end of the thermite grenade does explode so you can use it to destroy bug holes and destroy bot fabricators i've seen it done okay against bots i've seen it done okay against bugs i for some reason think that it's really good against bio titans i feel like i could just throw three have it stick to it watch it light up like a christmas tree and then watch it go down personally i like to think of a bio titan as a fridge and i'm just throwing these grenades like the fridge magnets and that's the mentality i have when i approach this game Lastly, this war bond features a new booster, and this booster is the ex Expert Extraction Pilot Booster. And what it does is it basically shaves off the time it takes for extract. And depending on what stratagem modifiers are currently on the mission that you're in, it can take somewhere between, I think, maybe 20 to 30 seconds of shaving off time. And that's nice, you know, it's helpful, but I don't think it's a very useful booster because here's the thing. This is a booster that will only benefit you and your team once you get into the extraction point. So basically after you're done with almost 98% of the mission. So once you're done with everything that you're doing and you get to that spot, it is at that point that you start getting value from your booster that you selected from the beginning of the game about 30 minutes ago. And there's so many other boosters out there like the health pot optimization or the one that gives you stamina regen that's giving you value straight from the get-go, even during the extraction. The pilot booster does sound interesting, but I just feel it's very ineffective and personally, I just wouldn't recommend it. So to sum it up, I feel like that every war bond will have its fair share of winners and losers. The sickle from the cutting edge war bond last month was a clear cut winner. In terms of weapons, the Eruptor definitely takes the cake. I have to say that the Adjudicator is still the bottom of the barrel. It just exists. And even though I think the Eruptor is way too strong given all the utility it offers and that the Adjudicator needs a lot of help, I feel like it's too early to call for any nerfs or changes. Again, at the time of me posting this, I've only played with these weapons for about one day's worth of time. I did spend, you know, 20 hours grinding out war bonds, recording footage, about almost a terabyte testing these weapons. But I'm not gonna say I know everything that these guns have to offer. I know some of you out there are really smart and will discover ways to make guns like the Adjudicator perform and I'm very eager to see what you guys find out. And again, this is just my day one impression of the weapons and I'm very curious to see how it plays out in the coming weeks and how, or if they get adjusted, how they get adjusted. And I'm also very curious to see what you guys think, so please comment your thoughts and opinions. I love reading and replying to what you guys have to say to these videos. And if you like what you heard, like what you see, please like and subscribe. I love covering Helldivers 2 content. And if you love hearing about it, be sure to stay tuned because I have a lot more video ideas in the works. Hope you guys are enjoying the new Warbond as much as I am and have a nice day.